So when you think about the Tudors, you often think about the southeast. If you do think about going up north, the Midlands, you might think about Yorkshire and Lincolnshire with the, the rebellions, the pilgrimage of grace. If you're thinking about the East Midlands, you might think Leicester and the Battle of Bosworth, which kick-started the whole Tudor dynasty in 1485. If you think about Derbyshire, you might think of Chatsworth House and Hardwick Hall, Bess of Hardwick. What you might not necessarily think about is Codner Castle. The castle itself dates back to the late 12th or early 13th century, and it's most famously associated with the Baron's Grey of Codner. And here there is a Tudor connection, because these are the same greys that were the descendants of Lady Jane Grey, who famously reigned reluctantly for nine days between Edward VI and Mary. It's one of only two medieval castles still standing, actually, in Derbyshire, and there's plenty more about the history of the castle, which is now privately owned and managed by the Codner Castle Heritage Trust at codnercastle.co.uk, and I'll add a link to that below this video. There are a number of things that drew me to Codner Castle. Firstly, it was the location. I'm used to reading all about grand historic castles, palaces and places synonymous with the Tudors, but there aren't too many, just half an hour or so from my doorstep. There's actually no access to the remains of Codner Castle by car, which I wasn't very well prepared for, and it resulted in me and my friend stumbling around and even inadvertently trespassing onto a golf course, which didn't go down too well, but that says more about our navigational skills rather than Codner Castle itself. Uh, but the much more interesting reason for highlighting Codner Castle is what is contained in Thomas Penn's book Winter King, Henry VII and the Dawn of Tudor England. In it, Penn suggests that the king, Henry VII, had considered setting his son Henry up independently and had acquired a home for him, none other than Codner Castle in Derbyshire. Uh, Codner Castle then cropped up in another book I was reading, this time David Starkey's Henry, where Starkey writes that Henry VII agreed to pay Lord Grey's executors £1,000 for the castle and other lands for the use of his second son. He does then go on to say that 40 years later the castle was described as all ruinous, but at the time it looked as though it was intended to become an outpost of Henry's dukedom. So why the change of heart? It was almost certainly the result of tragic events just a few months after the purchase of Codner Castle. Uh, having recently married Catherine of Aragon, Prince Arthur, Henry VII's eldest son, had moved with his household to Ludlow Castle in Shropshire, but this was to end in tragedy. On the 2nd of April 1502, the young Prince of Wales was dead, and in losing Arthur, probably to consumption, Henry, Duke of York, was no longer the spare, he was the heir. Keeping his son close was naturally a, a decision um, that Henry VII would take after losing Arthur, you know, the safeguarding of a fledgling dynasty that he set up and worked so hard to secure uh, just over the border in Leicestershire 17 years ago, had to take priority. And with only one son left, uh, Henry was now everything. Uh, I always find it fascinating thinking about how certain events change the course of history and equally wondering what might have happened if fate hadn't intervened. Uh, although that can obviously be frustrating because 99 times out of 100, you never know the answer. Uh, you'll never know the answer. Uh, the Tudor era is surprisingly well documented, but so much of it is forever lost to history. With that way of thinking, Codner Castle ticks all these boxes. We know that Henry VII bought Codner Castle in 1501. That's a fact. We also can safely assume that the primary reason for doing so was for the future Henry VIII. But why? Um, Henry VII was a meticulous thinker. Everything he did had a specific purpose, certainly in an era that could at any moment be ravaged by devastating outbreaks, outbreaks such as the sweating sickness. It made sense to have an outpost for his son um, a long way away from London, where the disease could and did spread like wild, wildfire. Um, but then many simply fled once the epidemic struck, so that can't be the only reason. Uh, we do know, obviously, that Henry VII sent Arthur hundreds of miles away to Ludlow, so there was definitely a precedent there for, for doing that kind of thing. Uh, but why Codner? Why Derbyshire? Uh, certainly, back then, it, the castle did have prestige, but then so did many illustrious buildings at the time up and down the country. Codner itself was remote, certainly not an obvious choice for potential future King of England, uh, and what Henry VII's exact thought processes were here, we'll, we'll probably never know. Um, this is really a story of what might have been. Henry VIII actually, ironically, never stepped foot in Derbyshire during his lifetime, and we know from the records at the time that just 40 years after Codner Castle had been all set up to accommodate the man who would later become England's most notorious and arguably famous monarch, uh, lay in a state of ruin. It's interesting to think what impact a move to Codner Castle could have had on the impressionable young Henry, his education, the people he spent his days with, his views on the world. Um, how, if at all, would it have helped shape and form his formative and consequently later years? Uh, again, that's something we'll, we'll never know. Um, 
I'll leave you with a, a lovely poem I found uh, by the Codner Castles Heritage Trust chairman, uh, Rakia Brown, uh, entitled The Forgotten Castle. And that reads, In Derbyshire hills I rest, the Earwash Valley I watch over with solitary pride. Among quarry mounds with nature has claimed, there I unwillingly hide. Too frail to push back the sands of time, my once formidable walls reduced to powdery remains. Neglect has allowed me to be beaten by tormented winds and rains. Lonely as the last flowers of summer days of a distant past my remnant keep, as long forgotten secrets lie beneath me, echoing memories as they sleep. But alas, I am still in the midst of political misgivings, waiting for mortals to cast down their ambivalent ways. Then memories will awake those whispers of the past, and my forgotten walls will once again amaze. So there you go, fate would determine that Connor Castle would only ever really be a pretty insignificant footnote in Tudor history. But had events been different in 1502, that could very well have been a completely different story. <laughs>